For more on the UN's climate change report, Angel Sue joins us. She's the director of Yale University's Environmental Performance Measurement Program. Angel's also a research scientist and lecturer at Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies. Um, Angel, uh, you're listening to the UN Secretary General saying time's not on our side. This sounds like a major wake-up call. Is that how you see it? Absolutely. So the latest findings of the UN Climate Report decisively say that nations need to act quickly and, and in order to address the effects of climate change, which are expected to be widespread and catastrophic if nations don't act right now. Malcolm said in his report that there's a make or break conference in Paris next year. Uh, we've heard the dire warnings before, and they've been met really with inaction. Uh, do you think things will be different this time around? That's the hope. The hope is that this latest IPCC climate report will provide that needed wake-up call to nations that we can't wait until 2020 or another decade to act on climate change. We're already experiencing the effects of climate change now in the form of increased extreme events and intensification of those impacts in the form of droughts, flooding, heat waves, massive wildfires that are affecting the United States, for example. And so the hope is that nations will be able to come to consensus and be ambitious in what they commit and how they can reduce their greenhouse gas emissions by next year in Paris. Um, Angel, I was at an event uh, here in Washington, D.C. last year where the U.N. came out and uh, gave a presentation on the Human Development Report. Um, that one example, the, the examined rather the shift in global dynamics driven by the fast rising powers of the developing world its implications for human development. They called it a rise of the South, and they looked at a number of countries that are developing at an unprecedented pace in human history. And we're not just talking about the BRICS nations. And they talked about how millions will be lifted out of poverty in developing nations, billions poised to join a new global middle class. Now, that sounds like great news, but it's also bad news. It means more cars, more consumption. How do you end up, you know, balancing these two? Absolutely. And that's really the challenge is in this warming climate, we're going to need to think about how we can provide justice and equity to these developing countries that enjoy the right and should have the right to develop, but at the same time helping them to deliver the technologies and implement the solutions that can help them leapfrog over these dirtier and more polluting phases of development that we already industrialized countries went through ourselves. And so that's really the challenge. And of course, you have major emerging economies, but also sub-Saharan African countries, small island states that are already feeling the effects of climate change, saying we must have the right to develop as well. And so they're really looking towards developed countries like the United States to take the leadership in the upcoming climate conference in Lima and also in Paris in 2015. So what should the U.S. be doing as they take the lead? What should be the message coming from the United States? Well, I personally think that the United States needs to be the most ambitious leader going into Lima and setting that example for Paris next year. So in the absence of any national climate change legislation, the United States can look towards Obama's executive orders to regulate power plants as one example where the United States is acting. And hopefully we can cooperate with major emerging economies like China, India, and Brazil to work collaboratively in order to come up with solutions for, uh, to address the problem of climate change. Let me ask you one final question. As you look at the landscape, who's doing it right? I mean, we heard about the Danes. That's a rather small country, but is there a major country out there that's doing things the right way? Well, I think that that's a very tricky and loaded question, but I think that there are some examples outside of Denmark where countries are taking leadership. China, for example, is on the brink of implementing a carbon tax. The leader that participated in the UN Climate Summit a couple weeks ago, he said that China's going to try to curb carbon emissions as soon as possible. And so I think that there's a lot of hope that if other developing countries follow China's lead, that we'll be able to meet the drastic cuts in emissions that are needed in order to avoid catastrophic global warming in the next couple years. Angel Sue with analysis for us. Uh, thanks so much for joining us from Yale today.